Hey, what's up all you addicts out there? Thanks so much for tuning in to another Addicted Fishing Tutorial. Today, actually, we were heading to the river and we were planning on doing some fishing, but we showed up and the river's just a little bit higher and muddier than we anticipated, right? Mother Nature threw us a curveball today. <laughs> exactly. It happened. So we're out here. We're going to go over some techniques. A lot of questions have been getting asked to the group and on the YouTube channel lately about how to fish high muddy water. So we're going to go over, talk sure. about our favorite things to use, bring something to you guys. Hopefully it brings you a little more success out here on the river on these yeah, days. Yeah, exactly. And it turns out it's high muddy water today. So we're going to talk about some baits, some of the high water stuff that a lot of you guys have been asking about. We're going to roll that right now. So Jordan, we showed up here. What are you doing? Like if you show up to the river, you know, because a lot of guys they're they're heading to the river and they might not even know that it blew out overnight or whatever. Maybe they didn't check the water level. Then you get to the river and you're like, crap. Right. You know, what do you do at that point? Well, especially if you went a long distance, if you travel a long way from home and you get in that situation, you Go want to the still bar. fish. Yeah, exactly. Go, Go to find the bar. breakfast somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. But what I do mainly is I first, I open my box. I want to go and I want to find something that the fish are going to see because that's what's going to be most important today. You want to go with different color variations and different presentation styles. And we have a few of those in our hand here. We're going to go over them quick. First and foremost, we obviously love our addicted steelhead worms. But what you want to do again, like I just mentioned, is open your box, look in your bag and see what colors are radiating in that bad weather, in that bad sky color and in that bad water clarity. So, you know, Marlin has, one of these setups on here. It's one of our, I don't even know the name of this one. And I have a few that I'm gonna pull out of my pocket here that are really some of the colors you wanna to go to. I wanna get bold with this. I want a big, flashy, bright presentation. And as you can see, when we hold these out in our hands like this, some of them just glow. Dude, it, it's so true like that. I mean, that glacier orange is like radiating in the light. And, and that's some... why I went with like a big, bright, like neon chartreuse head. Same with like the chartreuse tail, because you can see it just kind of glows. Exactly, and like matching them with maybe even a bigger jig head on a day when you're gonna have higher water. There's gonna be a lot of upwellings and a lot of different currents out there today, and you want your presentation down and in front of those fish. So here we have one of the quarter ounce weights, and again, one a little bit bigger. Match it up, and again, look which one's radiating. I'm probably gonna go with chartreuse head, and I'm gonna go with the glacier orange here. Um, but getting something that's going to be a big enough presentation and a big, big enough profile to be able to let those fish see it coming towards them is all that's going to matter. Well, and I like how you said like open up your box because even myself, that's not something I do. It, and when you say that and you like hold you're them in your hand. set up the night before. Yeah. yeah. And you're holding them in this light conditions. It's like, man, you can really see when you're looking at those worms. Like, okay, I'm probably going to fish that and that for sure. And I'm going to use that head. Yep. Like it's all just glowing. It's yep. like telling you. So that's the first thing I do. I really I identify my situation is what it comes down to. I look what I'm going at, I find the runs that are gonna hold the fish, which we'll talk about more here in a little bit on how to how to approach the river itself. But my presentation has to match my conditions, which we're trying to do right here with, with the colors. The bright stuff. So obviously, like we said, worms is, is a big thing. In this high murky water, you wanna give them something big, something flashy, something that they can see. And worms is something that all of us love and something that you should definitely have in your bag. So what next, Jordan? What do you think? And like, is there ever a scenario in this type of water you fish beads? I would definitely fish beads all the time. I love fishing beads. It's a good presentation. What it's, what's going to matter is a lot of times when the water's this high, you're getting, you're fishing the edges of the river. A lot of obstruction, a lot of snags, a lot of different things. So I'm not going to go with my typical long leaders, my long presentation where I'm going to be hanging up a lot. I'm going to shorten things up. Maybe go with a single bead, something with a little more color to it. Again, something that's vibrant and actually lets those fish see it. I got a big orange 14 mil bead on here, but I'm gonna do the same thing again like we just did with the worms. I'm gonna grab my bead box here out of my pocket and we're gonna open this thing up and immediately you'll be able to tell which one you wanna be fishing. Let's go across the whole spectrum here. We got pinks, we got oranges, we got red, and we got some white. Which one are you gonna choose? Yeah, I like this little game. Comment below which bead are you fishing showing out of those ones? You know? So again, I'm gonna identify my situation. I'm I mean, gonna that, that white one's looking pretty fishy. This guy. Oh yeah. But what are you picking, Jordan? Out of those three compartments you just opened, which one are you fishing in this water? You know, I like I like the red and white a lot. And again, and then I like the orange. A lot like the bead I have on here. Yeah, this one looks like it's really kind of popping in this light for sure. 
So, but what I'm gonna do especially is a lot of times when people fish beads, they go light, light tackle. It's not necessarily light tackle, but light weight mm -hmm. on their tackle. So I'm gonna step it up. I'm gonna go to either maybe using some pencil lead so my presentation slows down, or I'm gonna go with a half ounce or, or even more, three quarter ounce float, something that's gonna get down in front of those fish in a shorter space. We're not free drifting down the runs today. We're fishing the pocket that's at our feet, True. especially if we're stuck on the bank. So you wanna match that presentation to that little piece of water that you have, which might change throughout the day. Okay, so me, me personally, I, I wouldn't fish a bead. I just never would, Just because, but hearing you talk about it and why you would do it and upsizing the weight, you know, it gets your mind kind of like thinking like, maybe I should be trying that, you It's know? a slower presentation on a day when the water is moving really fast. Exactly. You know, a lot of the other things that we're gonna do aren't gonna get that worm or that jig or that bait on the bottom quite as well as maybe dragging a bead through a spot, so. And we're gonna show you guys some of this, so don't leave us, don't leave this video just yet because Jordan is gonna kind of get in the water here and just go through a quick run through of how he would approach some of these pockets that are behind us in this murky water. So next, I know something that you love and you fish in all water conditions. What about the spinner? Yep, spinner or any kind of hardware. And we almost fish them in that order. You come up to the run, you go step one, step two, step three, if you have the rods or you, have, you wanna change your setup. But the third thing we're gonna go with is some sort of hardware. And as you see here, I have a couple different spinners on my coat here. Marlon's got a big flashy, super heavy spoon that's gonna get down, what is that one there? That's a two thirds. Two thirds. So something that is gonna get into those fish's face and make a lot of noise. You can see I have just my normal number four on here. That's my old trusty. That's the old blue spinner there. But what I have on my coat here is something again with a little more flash. You see my color choice that I went with. Something that's bigger, something that's heavier, maybe something you can even add a little inline weight to, but you gotta get these spinners down because especially if it's a bell body, you guys have seen me talk about this a lot on some of the Addicted Lifes, it's not gonna sink in this fast water. So you want something that's gonna get down fast, has some sort of chartreuse, some sort of bright color that's gonna aggravate those fish. And again, just allow them to see it. I like brass in this kind of color water. It seems to stand out well with low light. But again, something that's gonna piss those fish off yeah. on your third something try. Something that's gonna attract them or make them feel like they wanna move out of this water right exactly. here. Exactly. And same same with like the spoon, you know, the, I, a lot of times I'm using something bigger, brighter, flashier, and something that the biggest key I think is just getting it down yep. fast enough. Because if you're not down where those fish are sitting, which is usually in that eight to 12 inches range off the bottom, you're not gonna find, you're just not gonna catch them. No. A lot of these fish too are sitting, like they're literally, their fins are in the dirt yep. when they're in the water. So if you don't have something big and bright to get down into their face like this, a two thirds ounce, or you can even get, sometimes what I'll do is I'll stack these. So you can take the spoon, stack another one on top of it, add that like clanking noise, yeah. and then gives you more weight. Works really, really well. And you lose $15 at a time. And you lose $15 <laughs> at a time. But one thing I gotta mention, guys, I've been using this Okuma X-Series spoon rod, which a little birdie told me they're gonna be available at the Portland Sportsman Show this year, which is February 5th through the 9th. So if you guys are coming to this Portland Sportsman Show, I know a lot of our viewers aren't in the area, but if you are, these X rods are gonna be available there. If not, look at them, go check them out online. Sensitivity's freaking amazing, lifetime warranties. They look freaking dope, they're insanely light. The castability of the action of that rod is by far one of the nicest bait casting rods I've ever touched. I've fished a lot of spoon rods over the years. One of my favorite rods was the Bill Herzog spoon rod that he came out with, which was a 10 foot. This rod kind of mimics that rod to me a lot. It's a 9.9, it's an 8 to 17, it's got a nice smooth tip so you can feel that spoon or spinner. You can literally feel it all the way down into the handle, everything that that blade or spoon is doing. I'm not gonna sit here and keep well, like coating this rod. That, let's talk a little bit more about our gear today. Exactly. Like, well, I, I mentioned weight, I mentioned different things like that. One of the biggest keys in high water is you do not want to lose the fish you finally hook. So I'm gonna really bump up my pound test. I wanna to touch on that. You usually go really heavy to begin with, but on a normal condition day when there's pressure on the river, I'm gonna go lighter 12 pound test. Don't be afraid when you get to the river, whether it be bead fishing, worm, bait, anything, bump that up. Yep. Get that line test up so that you're not losing the fish that you do potentially hook in this high water. Cause you got a lot of water volume here. So like if you hook them on this inside where it may not be moving as fast, the second they go out into that fast water, you're you're tangling with a lot of weight there. Yeah. So yes, definitely upping your all your baits. So anything else? Is there any other baits or things that you're gonna do? Because a lot of guys have asked, you know, we're on a river particularly today that you can't use bait. So this this river is no bait. So we don't have any bait with us. But a lot of times that's what I'm doing for sure. I'm trying to add scent. I'm trying to add bait. I'm trying to add something that can just 
help these fish find my lure or my bait that I have in the water. Yeah, I'm not gonna leave home without any kind of, if I brought, if I got to the river and I didn't have scent and it was in my truck, I'd probably hike back to my truck just to get that scent. Having something that's gonna allow those fish to get that other bit of their sensory reaction going, whether it's- can't be, see as good. Exactly, any kind of bait gel on a spinner even. So Procure came out with this, this Anna's Bait Wax. It comes in a couple different scents. I think they do a shrimp, anything else. But having any kind of scent or gel or the Addicted Winter Blend to put on any of these setups, even if it's a spinner, even if it's a worm, or even with bait. If you're gonna be fishing eggs or any kind of prawn, putting a little bit of that Anna scent or some of that, you know, even bloody tuna, yep. all the Procure scents work really well and you wanna have them if you're gonna be in this muddy water. Something to help. I mean, what would you say the Viz is right here? A foot. That's all you need is about a foot, if that. You know what I mean? But so you, anything that can help you help those fish find your bait. That's all it's gonna take on a day like today. Exactly. All right, so now guys, we've talked about all the gear setup, we've talked about the rod, and what we wanna take and put on our hook to get, get us a chance out of fish. Now we're gonna talk about the most important part, and it's actually fishing this high muddy water. You guys have been going through this whole video so far to find out how to fish it. What we're gonna do first and foremost, I'm gonna point around with my rod tip here and have Sean look out into the river. What I'm gonna do first when I walk up to the river is completely forget about anything that's more than about 20 feet away from me and close to the bank. These fish do not wanna be in that heavy current. It has a lot of sediment. It has a lot of, a lot of power pushing against them. So they're gonna hug the banks to an extreme. Some of these fish will be almost in the grass, going through the trees, taking that easiest path up the river. They're gonna be lazy. They're going to spawn, they're going wherever they're going, and they're taking the high water chance to get there. So as we turn and look at the river here, what I'm gonna do first is kind of explain what I mean about forgetting about the other side of the river. You look out here, out in the middle of this river here, she's a ripper. Again, about a foot of visibility. You see anywhere is about past this first foam line here is going too fast. You can see the big boil that's created and there's three different seams across the river here. We have the inside seam, which I'm touching here with my rod tip. We have the middle seam, which is about another two rod lengths out into the river. And then we have the outside seam, which is in that fast current that we don't even want to worry about. We're going to let the logs and all the trees float down that and we're going to catch the fish on the inside. So the way I'm going to approach it, again, got my big bright presentation. I'm going to start shallow because we don't need to be fishing very much water. Let's go to about six inches here. I got a half ounce float half ounce inline weight, 15 pound test down to my worm. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cast in an extreme, extreme distance close to me on the bank. So as we see, we got this nice slow current. I'm gonna make my first cast, again, within almost the rod length of my body. You can get very close to these fish on a day like today. So they are gonna be sitting inside, right at your feet on these inside currents. And it gets a little tough to stay persistent casting that close to you. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna maximize your effort. You're gonna spend less time on the river because you're gonna be fishing the good water, covering it well, not fishing the, the blown out blah water down to the run. And you're gonna be covering the right kind of water while you're fishing. So again, I started in that close cast. I'm gonna show you here really quick about the farthest that I would ever cast into this current here, which is about right there. That even itself is moving too quick. If you get any further out into that current, your float, your setup, everything is gonna be getting blown off the bottom of the river because of all that velocity from the water. It hits the bottom of the current, it pushes it up. And that's why the fish sit on the bottom is to ride those little vortexes and those little cushions in the current to be able to move up river. Okay, so with my worm here, I'm gonna make a couple more casts. I'd probably fish each of these setups for maybe 10, 15 minutes a piece, and then I'll switch over to a different setup and kind of show you guys how I wanna fish it. So let's make one more cast right here at our feet, right in the fishy water. taking that path of least resistance down the river just like the fish are taking up. And again, adjusting my depth to where I know I'm within eyesight of those fish. With these big flashy worms, you only have to be within the distance that the water clarity actually is, which today is about a foot. So keeping that close, right in their face, adjusting that bobber depth up and down is gonna be very important. So now let's go to the bead. All right, now we're gonna jump over to the bead setup, you guys. And I mentioned a couple things about fishing this bead setup a certain way to be able to fish these inside pockets and stuff. Because a bead thing, a bead is a, a presentation you need a lot of current to push down river because you're dragging it. You're purposely dragging it down the bottom of the river. So again, I wanna fish these inside seams like I started off saying. So I wanna set up correctly. I got, again, a half ounce float. I got a half ounce stage tangle free weight, which I could even go up a little higher to a three quarter ounce just on a three way swivel. I got a lot shorter leader than I probably would mostly fish. This is about four feet, three to four feet here. 
and I added some weight to the middle of my line with a split shotter. So you can go with a bigger split shot, number seven, number six size split shot is gonna work really well. But the way you're gonna fish this is by using that split shot to your advantage. I got a big 14 mil bead on here, so I need something a little bit heavier. I'm gonna go with a little bit bigger hook. This is the number two Mustad bead hook that we're working on. But you want something that's gonna be dragging on the bottom and getting down on the fast current. But the way I wanna get it down on, on the bottom is a little bit different. I'm gonna try to match my bobber stop to the exact depth that I'm guessing it is in front of me. So I'm thinking it's about three feet or so. To fish these inside pockets, you're not gonna be able to drag your bead down down the, bo down the bottom of the river like you normally would with like a bobber dogging setup. So I'm gonna try to match my bobber stop right with the depth that I think it is. And I'm gonna allow this split shot to drag down the bottom of the river instead of the main weight of my float. So that split shot's gonna go a lot better with the current. It's gonna allow me to drift through that inside seam. And again, I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna cast this really nice and close. And you can see, instead of a really tough drag where my bobber spins me straight down the river the whole time, I'm gonna have that bobber a little bit more suspended straight up and down, but I know because of the pressure of the current going down the river that my split shot is, is doing enough work to keep that bead down on the bottom. So again, make a couple casts here, keeping it nice and close, completely forgetting about that other side of the river. And drifting it right down into that sweet zone. I'll make a couple more casts, I'll work it out in the middle a little bit more. And it always goes back to what I preach in all my tutorials, which each one of these presentations, you start close, you go to the middle, and then you cast far. And then you go back to that. It doesn't mean you go close, middle, far, 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 far the rest of the day. You go close, you go middle, you go far, you come back in. You go close, you go middle, you go far. You can see that bobber is jumping up and down a little bit. I'm, I'm touching bottom just enough to make a real fishy presentation. Letting it go down straight in front of me. And bringing it back in. And having proper line management, covering that a little bit, is gonna be really crucial today because there'll be a lot of different water currents pushing my stuff around, making those mends at appropriate times and keeping that line up out of the brush, keeping your rod tip high and not letting a lot of that line fall in the water is gonna be crucial to getting a good presentation. So let's go one more, just a little bit farther with the bead. And then we're gonna grab the spinner, go down to a spot that actually will fish a spinner a little bit better and we'll go through that with you guys. All right, everyone, so Jordan was able to kind of walk you through some of those setups right there on the bobber rod to kind of help you understand where to fish when the water's high, murky, and fast like this. So we moved spots again, kind of down into a little bit more of a longer run, and you can see a lot of times the tail outs of these runs are always gonna form spots for these fish to rest, right, Jordan? It's the only way for the water to settle down. It's not too gradient, it flattens out, it pushes towards the banks, and those fish are gonna come into these tail outs as quick as possible as they come up river to hit that easy water. To hit that soft water. And right, if Sean shows right here, Sean, if you wanna do just a little pan, you can see on the inside right here. There's a nice little seam that's created. The water is hitting the bank, boiling back, back out and creating a cushion along the bank. And so going back to what we were gonna talk about here, the hardware, it's gonna be fished a little different. I'm not gonna fish this in the top of the run necessarily or in the really fast water. I'm gonna to try to pick the biggest widest part of the run to fish with the spinner so that I can swing it into those fish's face. So I'm going to step out here just a couple of steps. Sean, you come with me. And I'm going to show you guys how to start it. The way that it's all about pursuit angle with the high water with your spoon or with your spinner. You want to get it up, let it get down, and then fish it to where you think those fish are going to be. So don't cast a foot in front of where those fish are going to sit in that tail out or where you think they will. Cast above that, get that presentation to the fish, and then allow them to see it by having it down in a zone the whole time. So as I'm gonna go here, I got my nine foot rod, 20 pound bumper down to my big spinner that I showed you guys a second ago. This one's nice and heavy. It's got an extra little weight inside this bell. Something that's gonna get down in front of those fish. But instead of casting down or way up, I'm gonna cast again, keeping my first cast about 10 to 15 feet, nice and close, creating a pursuit angle. I'm gonna bring that tight and swing that all the way in. And then I'm gonna allow this thing to sit and almost troll in the side of these eddies like this. I'm gonna put it right next to the bank and I'm just gonna let that current take it until I start feeling that tap of bottom. I have my rod tip pointed out towards the middle of the river so that my line's catching the current and I'm holding that spinner right in that strike zone until it dies off on the side of that current and comes back into me. So that was my first cast, I only went about 10 feet. This next one, because I'm not gonna be able to wade through this whole thing, I'm gonna cast a little bit further but a little bit farther up river as well. That was probably 40 foot cast. I'm gonna engage that spinner pointing my tip right at it, letting it fall down to the bottom so I can feel all the sensitivity by pointing my tip at it, allow it to get into that current line. Then I'm gonna point my tip out towards the middle and let it sit right in the edge of that current seam, just like so. You can see my tip still vibrating, my blade's still spinning. I'm not even touching my reel. 
and I'm gonna let it sit right in that strike zone until it dies off in that soft current, and then I'm bringing it back in. And that third cast, again, you're gonna go even farther upriver so you have time to sink, and a little bit farther to cover that last little part of the tail out. A little further up, a little further out. I'm gonna put my rod tip again right at the spinner. Wait till I feel bottom. There's bottom right there. I'm gonna point my tip out, and I'm gonna let that bad boy swing right over into the strike zone. So you're nearly trolling this hardware on a day like today. It almost would be the same presentation as if you were trying to back a plug down with a boat or anything like that. You're gonna hold it in that strike zone, give those fish a long time to see it, and allow them to react to that spinner or whatever presentation that you have. So quickly, Jordan, take this worm rod from me now and just show, you know, show how, how you can fish this in just a longer run. Because now you have, up there, you were in more of a shorter run right. fishing that. You didn't have much of a bucket where here you have a lot longer run you can run this worm down into. So same thing. I'm going to pick this inside current. I'm going to start close and I'm going to work my way out. I'm going to bring that right in just off the edge. And these fish honestly could be even closer. I can get away with fishing right here even. That's where I would put it. That's where those fish are going to want to sit and that's where you're going to want to start your first cast. Because the worst thing to do on a day when the water's high and there's potential for a lot of fish is cat or catch the fish further out in the river and spook the ones that are on the inside. It's a great advantage on days like today where there's less visibility to where those fish can't necessarily see you and not see the other fish react to your presentation. So you could catch one, land one, and the fish that's 20 feet out in the river never even felt that, that fight or never was spooked by the, you catching the first fish. Go just a little bit further here, work that outside seam. Well, you can see, even on that outside, as the water it's forming a nice like there's a lot of water right here for us to fish versus the rest of the width the river right. so that tells me automatically most likely if i have a chance of catching a fish this is where they're going to be is right on this little inside so when i'm going up and down the river in these high water scenarios i am looking for these type of spots to target all right, everyone, thanks so much for tuning in with us today. Me and Jordan are gonna be hitting the river and coming out with a bunch more of these tutorials today. So we're gonna run up and down the river and kind of give you guys a bunch of different tips. So do not forget, tap that subscribe button, turn on that little bell notification. And thanks again for tuning in. You got anything else you wanna tell these guys, Jordan? No, you guys, stay out there. Keep fishing, keep supporting, go have fun, and stay fishy. We'll see you guys out there on the river. We'll see you on the river.